and make a poor suicide bomber. I don't know how to flip the switch. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a terrorist. <laughs> I might be a terror, but I'm not a terrorist. And I'm getting so old now, I'm not much of a terror. Thank God. Settle down. Well, greetings, brothers and sisters, and welcome to all. I'm so glad to see everybody that has come here. I'm just really glad to see, actually. But uh, we've uh, arrived once again. It's, it's my... Uh, it's my annual vacation, my holiday. It is. It's a holy day. And, and it's a holiday. And it's the only holiday that, that my wife and I ever take, other than maybe to visit relatives. And we're very, you know, I, 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 I wait from year to year to, <clears throat> to come and, and keep this feast and have this time together with others of like precious mind and that. And, and so, <clears throat> oh dear. <clears throat> Wrong way. I'm go that way. <coughs> it, <coughs> I've taken so much stuff this morning to try to dry myself up. I have this rotten COPD, and it's just, I very seldom sing and speak the same day, but the song that I sang fits in with my message today, and I thought it was very important that we have that song. So now. Anyway, it's a time to leave your problems and your troubles behind and come and fellowship and worship and, and, and realize that we're in the flesh. We, this life is not long. This is very temporary. We've, we've, we've only got a short time. Uh, another thing we think of at this time of year, of course, is the wonderful millennial reign of our Lord and Savior as King, and, King of Kings and the wonderful opportunity that we have as first fruits of the kingdom to, to, to be there with our Savior as his priests and, and uh, when, the, when the great harvest begins, the, the, the time of the great harvest when Satan is taken out of the way and, and well, I long for that day. And so today my question to you is do you have peace? Do you have peace in your life? Have you got that peace? It's, it, it's a wonderful peace. Uh, and, and the peace that only faith in God can bring in this world. It, 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 and this is a feast of peace. Uh, you know, Isaiah 9, uh, verse 6, calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. Talks about other names for him. Actually, I've got a list of 53 names in my briefcase that are descriptions and names for Jesus in the Bible. So many different uh, names that are, are, are given to, to our, our blessed Savior throughout the Bible. He is the Prince of Peace. He's coming as the Prince of Peace to bring peace to this world. He taught the lesson of turn the other cheek, not the eye for the eye, and that. Now, of course, we live in a world that... And um, with, without God, there is no peace. You know, people people try to broker peace. We have we have politicians and and what the, uh, not that go around the world trying to broker peace, and and uh, and they will never broker a lasting peace. It it will not happen. The, the carnal man doesn't know peace, and. Uh, the world has, has, has not known uh, peace forever. I mean, read your Bible and you'll find out that it's been wars, wars, and wars from the beginning of time all the way down, uh, you know, uh, through the centuries. We've had some horrendous wars and there, we still have wars in the world. It goes on and on and right from the time of Cain to the present time, there's been no lasting peace in the world. There could have been, but there isn't. And so, we sit here on a time bomb now, not knowing when it's gonna explode. The world is a dangerous place, 
it's become a scary place. Um, certainly, we we've um, had numerous disasters, and they seem to, uh, according to the meteorologists I was listening to here a while ago, when when the big uh, hurricane hit uh, down in Texas, he said these storms are 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 becoming greater and greater in velocity as time goes on, and and uh, I mean look at the destruction in, in in southern Texas, and then right after that now. Florida and, and, and Puerto Rico and all those islands where the, the big cruise ships go to and that's that's their main income is tourism. They're, they're all in a world of hurt. The whole world is in a world of hurt. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we're, we're living in a, in a, in a time when, uh, when things are not very good in this world. And yet we go on and on, and many people are completely oblivious to what's going on in the world. Certainly, the disasters that that, that have happened cost billions of dollars to rectify, and the nations that we live in are so far in debt now that it, it, it's just a, it's a mess. Our infrastructure is getting old and and needs to be replaced and and we're already living on borrowed money and uh, you know so it, it it's not a very pleasant place and 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 so unless you have peace with God and with our precious Savior you won't have any peace in this world you know people are not content people are looking for contentment in all the wrong places you know I, I, I see a world where people are so deep in debt and yet they still want to do everything and, and go everywhere and take vacations and stuff. They think, oh, if I could just take an exotic vacation, the stress would be gone from my life. Well, that, that's good for about a week. <laughs> and then you come back and realize, wow, <laughs> I, I, I just spent two years worth of mortgage payments, you know. Why didn't I pay that down on my mortgage or something to get myself out of debt? You know, like that, that would be more peace of mind, certainly for me, than, than, you know, than, than, you know, than a vacation. They, uh, they, just don't, uh, they just don't work for me. We're living in a world that I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I'd want to travel a lot now anyway when you see what's going on. I mean, look at... Look at Las Vegas the other night. My goodness, what a, what a deal! I mean, just peacefully there at an outdoor concert, and all of a sudden, the the bullets start flying every direction, and that we just had a little incident up in Edmonton, Alberta, with a, and that was supposedly a terrorist one. That uh, that guy was a radical, and um, nobody was killed, but he rammed his car into a police cruiser and jumped out with a knife and started. Oh no, he hit the policeman who was standing direct in traffic, yeah. And then hit the cruiser and then jumped out and started stabbing the policeman with a knife. You know, we see all kinds of crazies in the world. I was at a, um, a funeral this summer for a lady and, and her daughter, who lives in France, came over for the funeral. And uh, while we were, uh, after the funeral and that, I, I went over to talk to her. I'd never met her before, but she looked so much like her mother, I had to go and talk to her. I, I, I said, I would, I would, you know, swear your mother was still here when I look at you and that. And so I said, what are things like in France? And she said, well, in France, people are scared. She said, people are nervous. They, they don't know when, you know, and when and where the next attack's going to come from. She said, There's, it, it, it's very scary. And, and so, and that, that's the way the world's getting to be. It, it, it's, uh, it's getting to be a scary place. And so we need, to, uh, we, we need to keep a close relationship going with our God and, 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 and search for this peace, this wonderful peace, this peace that passes all understanding, as the Apostle Paul called it. I was a, a, a workaholic in my younger days. I, wa I wanted to get wealth. I, 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 didn't, 
I, I walked away from everything to do with God and religion as a young man because I was raised in an old Wesleyan Methodist type church and my father kept telling me that I was, I was going to be hot for eternity and, and I didn't want anything to do with that. I had read my Bible. I had a little New Testament when I was a boy and I kept asking my mother and dad why we were going to church on Sunday. I said, I'm reading in this little New Testament, Jesus went into the synagogues on the Sabbath and that. Why do we go on Sunday? Well, they, they concocted some answer for me. I forget what it was, something about a day was lost in time or something and that. I didn't buy it. And so I walked away and I, I, I said, you know, if, if, if I'm lost for eternity like they tell me, I'm going to have a good time. And I, I became a, a long distance trucker and I ran all over the United States and Canada and uh, I used to get this program on my radio during the night when I was driving, the World Tomorrow program. And it started to, you know, work on me. I thought, hmm, maybe there's more people in this world that, that don't think Sunday is the right day. <laughs> And that so anyway I was trying to run from God I didn't want anything to do with this thing and that so it, it took a couple of um, very serious wrecks for me to finally get the the switch turning on here you know I was I was nearly killed in 1975 in Iraq and only about three months after I I, I met the woman who's my wife of 40 years now, and uh, boy, it it, uh, it it started to wake me up, but not totally. I was still in a bit of a daze, and two years later, I had another wreck. This time, I fell asleep in the mountains and missed a corner and went down over the side of the mountain down in Idaho and came to at the bottom of the hill, and I was still alive. <laughs> the blood was shooting out of my leg and every step I took the blood was shooting I had to climb up the side of this mountain to the road and the sheriff was sitting up there when I got there and he took me to the hospital and I laid in the hospital for two weeks after that one not knowing whether I was going to lose my leg or not and, but you know he had to put Jonah in a whale to get him to do what he wanted him to do. Me, he had to, I'm a bit of a hard case, he had to nearly kill me and that. But once I surrendered my life to God, things improved. I lost my desire to, to gain great wealth and God never wanted me to be wealthy. It, it would have ruined me. And I the old habits went away. I, I quit gambling, I quit drinking to excess. I, I like a glass of wine with my meal, but I, I, was, a, I was a heavy boozer at one time and, and uh, a womanizer and that until I finally met my dear wife, Bonnie, and I'm sure God gave her to me. <laughs> She's been such a, a wonderful blessing in my life Neither one of us had any, any idea that we would ever end up in a church. But when we did, we ended up there together. We were baptized together. And we've had 40 wonderful years as of last April um, uh, of marriage. And, and God has blessed us so much. And my wife is not one who, who wants to travel or do things. She's very, very good with the money. She's very close with the money. I have to squeeze her to get anything out. <laughs> and, and that's good for me because I'm a spendthrift. And so we have the right combination. She hoards it and I spend it. <clears throat> and so even to get her to leave home and come to the feast, she doesn't need, she doesn't, she, she just loves her home. She doesn't want to she doesn't want to travel, she doesn't want to do anything, and that's very good, that's, that's very wonderful, you know, because I've seen all of North America through the, the, the windshield of a, of a truck, so I, I, you know, I'm like 
the old I've been everywhere song and that, you know, and that. So together we have learned contentment and that, that's what we need in our life is contentment. And so let's, let's have a look at 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, because the Apostle Paul wrote Timothy a letter and I'm, uh, I'm just going to cut in here oh, about the middle of verse 5 into this thought because this is what I want to I impress upon us here today. Uh, supposing, he, he, he talks here about, well, we'll start at the start of verse 5. Per, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and dis- destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw yourself but godliness with contentment is great gain keep that thought godliness with contentment is great gain and then he goes on to tell him we brought nothing into this world and and we're not going to take anything out of this world and so in verse 80 he says and having food and raiment let us be therewith content if people in this world could learn that contentment, what a wonderful place it would be. Because where we live now, I'm sorry to say, but uh, we're just like the Israel and Judah of old. The developed nations of the world have forgotten their God today. They, they, they don't want them. You just look around. They're chasing God out of everything. They... Uh, they, they, they don't, you know, they, they don't want anything to do with this God. And that's the way Israel and Judah got. I mean, I've just been reading the, through the prophets and, and take, taking my annual trip through the Bible and that. And, and uh, boy, oh boy, as I've been reading the, the kings and the prophets this year, I can see Canada and the United States I, I, I can just see it. I, I can just think that Israel and Judah had gotten to that point that, you know, that we're at today. And, and, and God is very patient. Thankfully, God is so patient. Like, look at how long. I mean, he, he sent Hosea and then he sent Isaiah during the days of uh, Rehoboam too. And, 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 and Isaiah prophesied and prophesied and they didn't want to hear what he was saying. They wanted the smooth things. They wanted their prophets to tell them good things. And, and Isaiah didn't have a lot good to tell them, except that there is a wonderful time coming in the end of it all. But if you want to go to Isaiah 59, let's just have a wee peek here at Isaiah 59. Verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Does that sound like the world we're living in? We go down to verse 8. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goes therein shall not know peace. And, the, and, the, and, and I see uh, this, this is the world we're living in. It, it's, there's no peace. There's no contentment. It's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's not a good place. Let's go to um, Philippians, the fourth chapter. Again, um, I want to talk about contentment here because the Apostle Paul, he knew a lot of trouble in his times. He, he, uh, He didn't have a cushy job. None of the Apostles did. It wasn't anything that you'd go out and volunteer for, I don't think. And 
and certainly the, uh, uh, to be a prophet wasn't that uh, cushy a job either. And so in, in verse 11 Paul uh, of chapter 4 of Philippians, Paul says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content, to just be content. And he said, I know, verse 12, both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer uh, need. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Always remember that. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But you have to have a relationship. You have to walk in obedience. He wants, he wants obedience from, from uh, his people. He, he's a loving God. And he loves us all. But he hates sin. And so, and of course he knows, Jesus walked this earth, he knows what, what it's like to be tempted and tried and that. And we all sin and come short of the glory of God, but we have to, we have to continually grow and, and, and strive to walk in his ways and, 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 and get a relationship and, and, and learn how to repent and, and change your ways. Certainly, um, You know, Isaiah came on the scene and, and uh, right away in the first chapter of, of Isaiah, you know, um, he gets this message. And this is even before his lips were touched with hot coals, or at least the way it's related here anyway. And, and if we look at Isaiah 1 and verse 2, it says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. He said, the ox knows his owner, and the ass uh, his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people do not consider. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children are their corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. This is the world we're living in. And so... We have to, we have to have a relationship. There, it, there's, there's a remnant here. There's, there's, a, there's a, a faithful few that, that, that love God and are, are going to stay the course and are going to, you know, to uh, probably go through some horrendous times. There's certainly going to be tribulation in this world. There is already. I mean, ask somebody who lives in in southern Texas what tribulation is all about, or somebody living in Puerto Rico, see, or, or somebody who's just suffered an earthquake. These people know what it's like to, to have tribulation and that, and, and, and so it, I believe there's going to be more and more of these things go on as time goes on, and if you don't have hope in God, you have no hope. You have no hope. You know, we, we need to be so careful as God's people that, that, that we don't get caught up in this in this um, Babylonian system too uh, too bad if we Romans 12 and, and you've heard this over and over and I, I really want you to think about this. Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Boy, that, now that's a tough one. But we need to be careful that we don't get you know, caught up. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That, that's, that's not easy. But there's a big warning. Remember Revelation, the 18th chapter, and I'm not going to go there, but at the time when Babylon has fallen, has fallen, 
He's saying, come out of her, my people. I think that's verse 4. Come out of her, my people, lest you be partakers of her sins. And, 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 and this is something, as people of God, that we have to be careful, that, 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 we, you know, that we don't get too conformed to this world. God is faithful. And, and reading the, the prophets recently, like, my memory is getting so bad that, you know, I can read something today and it's gone tomorrow and that. So I have to, I have to continually keep my nose in this word. And, and it's in my heart, but sometimes it doesn't want to come out of my head. I, I think of, uh, of Psalm 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Uh, that's, that's a dear verse to me. And so, I have to work hard at this, but I take comfort in knowing that God can protect you. Look at Jeremiah, the 39th chapter. Poor old Jeremiah suffered so much as a prophet. I mean, he was, he was cast in the pit, he was ridiculed. He, he cried out to God that he wanted to quit, and yet he couldn't. He said, I can't, I can't stop. I have to keep going. And look at how God looked after him. After all he'd been through, when Nebuchadnezzar's army came, the third time and destroyed Jerusalem. Chapter 39, Jeremiah the 11th verse. L look at this. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look well to him. Do not harm him, but do unto him even as he shall say unto you. Isn't that protection? Like, like think about it. It, it. It's wonderful. If God wants to protect you, he'll protect you. And you don't have to worry about it. You, you just stay close. Like, stay close. I, 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 another one that I just was reading the other day in Ezekiel, and, and I, I, you know, I never, never thought about this, but you know, in the ch chapter eight of Ezekiel, how how Ezekiel talks about being um, taken in the spirit and lifted up, and and and, and now he's he's already in Babylon. This is at the time of the first, the first group that was taken out, Daniel and and those that, that were taken to Babylon. But here he is, he's taken in vision in, in chapter 8, verse 3 to Jerusalem. And then God shows him all these abominations. He shows him in verse 14, the women sitting weeping for, for Tammuz. Uh, um, and then he, he goes on to tell him, I'll show you even greater abominations. And in verse 16, he said, he, he said, look at this, between the uh, let's see, verse 16. He brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east, and they worshipped the sun towards the east. That was a Sunday morning sunrise service. It, it you know... But, but here's what, I, what, what struck me in this. Because he's about to send these men to destroy it all. And so in chapter 9 we see uh, a, a man um, with, with, with an inkhorn, which they carried uh, that they could write and so on and so forth. So in verse 3 we see um, about the middle of the verse. He called to the man with the clothed with linen, uh, which had the, the writer's inkhorn by his side. And, and the Lord said unto him, verse 4, Go throughout the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. They were marked, and they were spared. You see? It, 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 it's wonderful. It, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. God knows His own. I pray today that, 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 that you, you sigh and you cry at the abominations that are going on in our world. It, 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 it's, it's very, very 
very sad that you know to think that we have such a wonderful God and yet people don't want anything to do with them. They don't. They they don't want. They don't want anything to do with it. Just throw them out. Get rid of them. We've been overtaken by pride and greed and vanity and covetousness and 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 we need to we need to really stay close to God as we go forward. I just read an article in a magazine. I think it might have been the Bible Advocate. I don't know. I, I'm, you know, I do a lot of reading, and uh, but I think it was it was it was written by a woman, and she was writing about how addicted she had become to her iPhone. She said, "I I became so addicted to my iPhone that I I can't even sit down and concentrate to read the Bible." She said, I, it, it's, it's affected my prayer life and, and, and my time to meditate. She said, and, and I've seen people that were so addicted to those things that, you know, you, you, you see them walking down the street and their, their heads down like this and, and they walk out uh, off the curb and it's a wonder somebody didn't run them over. Probably they do some of them and that. And she said, I had to, I had to learn to control that iPhone, not let that iPhone control me. We can get caught up so bad in all these devices today. My dad used to call them D devices, D for devil. <laughs> and of course, I don't have an iPhone, so I, I wouldn't. I, they, they, somebody hands me an iPhone to look at a picture, and I get nervous. <laughs> I, I get really scared. Like, what's going to happen now? You know, like, I'm, am I going to hold this thing the wrong way, and is it going to blow up on me, or what's going to happen? I got an old flip-top phone. I was upset when I had to trade in my old one and get one you could put a SIM card in. <laughs> but we, we don't need it. Now I had, when, when cell phones first came out and I was in the trucking business, I had a great big old monster mounted in my truck and whatnot. And it was wonderful for business because now you could get a hold of me on the road if you could catch a tower where there was service, you know. And that, but it, it, it worked. It had a wonderful place, but I don't need it anymore. I, all I got's an old laptop computer, and the only thing I know how to do with it is send the email out to the odd person and and uh, look up a few websites or something. But other than that, I, it it it's gone. I mean, I'm not a techie. I am not. I am a dinosaur of dinosaurs. But I have peace. Obedience to God brings peace. I want you to go back to Isaiah again. 48th chapter. There's something again here that, that, that I caught. And, um, <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> 48th chapter of Isaiah and verse 18. And I'm, I'm cutting in here again, but this, this is a very important verse to me. And he's talking, of course, to, to Israel here. And he's saying, Oh, that you had hearkened to my commandments, then you would have had peace like a river, and your righteousness would have been as the waves of the sea. Just think of that. Obey God and have peace like a river. Peace like a river. I, I just love to park along beside a river and stand there and watch that river rippling along, nice gentle river. It, it's so peaceful. And, and, and that's the kind of peace God wants us to have. Peace like a river. Let's have a peek back here a little bit in Psalms. Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verse 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and His ears are open under their cry. If you've got a relationship with God, He hears when you cry out for Him. He hears that. Um, I'm going to keep you here a while yet. Psalm 37. Psalm 
37, verse 11. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Peace, peace. Well, we're still in this one. Uh, let's go to verse 37. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. Um, let's flip over a few pages here. Now uh, we'll go right on over to Proverbs. Third chapter of Proverbs. This is the chapter of, of wisdom. But here he says in verse 1 and 2 here, My son, forget not my law, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace they shall add to you. Again, what a, what a wonderful thing. Later on in this, he's talking about wisdom, and he says, Her ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. We, we, we got we to gotta lay hold of this. We got to grab hold of this peace, this wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. I, I, I just love that. It, it's, it's a wonderful thing, and, and, and it, it, it's certainly something that we all need in our lives is to is to learn peace. I want to go back again to Philippians. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. You, isn't that beautiful? Like, like we, we, we have to lay hold of this. We have to, we have to grab onto this wonderful peace that God wants us to have and not get caught up in the things of this world that distract and, and, and take us off the track, derail us. We need to stay the course. Romans 5. Romans 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience, and patience experience and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. We, we, need, we need to grasp this. We need to lay hold of this. Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, he, he started most of his letters with grace and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ. Do you have that peace today? If you don't have that peace, seek that peace. Ask God to give you that peace. Ask Him to help you with that. We really need, in, in, in the times that we're going to be facing down the road, we, we need to have peace, that inner peace. Oh, we'll face trials. It doesn't mean your life's going to be without trials. You'll have trials. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to happen. But you know, like, I, I have lots and lots of aches and pains. I have arthritis just about every place you can get arthritis. And, and uh, I've got an artificial shoulder in here and that, and it isn't all it's cracked up to be either. It's very painful at times and, and that. But I think about how our Savior suffered for us. 
and that helps me with my pain. I, it, it does. It just it, 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 it gives me a sense of calmness when I think that, that he suffered needlessly. He, he, you know, he didn't have to go through that, but he did it for us. And that, and that helps me in my pain. And so we will have trials. Let's go to Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall re be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Take comfort in these verses. Take, get peace from them. Again, First Peter. Let's back up here to, to um, chapter one. First Peter, chapter one. Now yeah, we'll start right at the start here. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath uh, begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A lively hope. This is, this is a lively hope. This, this, this hope, you know, you go out and you buy a, a, a lottery ticket, and, and uh, I don't, but people do. And they hope they're going to win. They hope their numbers are going to come up in that. That's not the kind of hope this is. This hope is a lively anticipation. It, 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 it means something. This is the hope that, 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 that we have as, as God's people. And so we need to lay hold of this. And the only way we can have that is to know that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, the firstborn, the first fruit of many first fruits. And, 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 and that, that is, is what sustains us and keeps us We'll go on in verse 4 here. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fades not away, reserved in the heavens for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And he goes on, he said, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Oh, Satan's still out there. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you. God, he, uh, he still doesn't leave me alone. I have to fight him. I have to fight him constantly. He, he, he just loved to bring us down. That, that's his job. So, so, so don't, don't worry about it. If, you, if you're being tempted in that, like, like just stay close to God. Don't let Satan get a foot in the door. He goes on to say in verse 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried in the fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, in whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Eternity. Eternity with our blessed Savior, our King of Kings. What a wonderful time that will be. And uh, I'm just really looking forward to it, and I pray every day that God will give me the strength to stay the course, certainly. And so, as we... As we come to a, 
an end to this, I just I just want to read a, a, a few scriptures of encouragement that that fit in with the uh, with this particular time of uh, of year and this feast. Let's go to Isaiah 11. <clears throat> Isaiah 11, it starts out talking about the branch, another name for Jesus. We'll start in verse 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Can you imagine having a government that is righteous, a government that, that, that gives good counsel, a government that, that, that's not corrupt and crooked and wicked? This is what's coming. And we go on. Verse 6. This is a wonderful time. I look at this and I just love this. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard uh, shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed. Uh, their young ones shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox and the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isn't that a wonderful thought? I'm looking for that day. I want to see that day. Let's just do one more passage here. And, and uh, let me see if I can even find it. Micah. Let's go to Micah. taking it out of this one. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Here it is. Micah, the fourth chapter. I'm just going to read five verses here. These are another beautiful end time passage. Uh, Micah 4, But in the last days it shall come to pass, verse 1, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it and many nations shall come and say come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against a uh, nation, uh, neither shall they learn war any more, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk every one in the name of his God, and we... Uh, <coughs> We will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. So let us press on, brethren. Press on daily praying, Thy kingdom come. Praying for peace on earth and goodwill towards men. 
I want to leave you with a short little benediction here out of the book of Jude. It's a piece of scripture that I, I just love. And I want you to, if I can find it. Oh, I found it. <laughs> um, it's a benediction. Verse 24. And he, he closes this little letter here up with this. And he says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Enjoy the feast, brethren. Seek peace. Stay close to God.